um, we're going to put some paint up in the hall and uh, it's well well needed because it's been done in this kind of very 80s remember like this I think this is like a rag rolling or did they use carrier bags but anyway this is the hall it's got some beautiful features left it's got um, that ceiling rose which is stunning and this really deep set uh, coving and detail okay a quick update uh, we've got the first coat of um, white on this coving and on the ceiling and I've also cut in I've cut in around the frames uh, it's um, pretty much finished the uh, cream on the uh, walls that's had three coats uh, the ceiling has had uh, a couple of coats and we are done on the gold I'm really pleased how that's come up we've taken some highlights on the ceiling rows there project so we've got the uh, last final coats of the yellow on that wall. Obviously the ceiling's done, uh, the lamp is up. Let's just show you the, the new lamp, which was up on the first floor landing, which looks much better down here now. Um, the boot is all done. All the uh, um, bottom half has had its final coat. Uh, that radiator is all painted and done. The other thing is, uh, I've painted all this moulding. If you remember, this is the uh, cheap moulding that we've used before. And that's had its first coat of gold. And we're going to make some boxes here, some frames. So I've cut all the timber ready. So part of the hall, uh, the original part of the hall, had this lovely hardwood uh, um, key holder. And then we've got uh, these gold clips here. And then these ones over here. So I'm just going to give them a dusting over of gold and then pop them back on. They've been finished. New glass on the top. We took away the obscured glass on the top and then replace that with some clear glass just put some new beading around that to make that look smart and then so we filled all the uh, frame and that's being rubbed down and prepared so what I'm doing now is just putting an undercoat uh, on the window and then tomorrow it can have its first uh, gloss top coat So what we're doing here is all the windows are really uh, in poor condition. They haven't been painted for years. So uh, we've got to go back to the bare wood primer and then a couple of coats of gloss. The good news is uh, the frames are actually in really good condition considering. But come and just come and have a look and uh, I'll show you up close what we're, what we're doing here. Scraper first to get the big flakes off and then I'll then get a, a coarse sandpaper on that uh, so we're going to do all the window all the window frames the two windows are down there if you have a look in the hall uh, they're going to need a lot of putty repairs and I've got to put a new pane of glass in that center that center one today all of the railings haven't been uh, painted for years so I've got to laboriously take off all the paint then sand and then black tamarite if you remember all these bands which are in lead uh, we're going to do those in a highlighted gold. So we're re-glossing um, these windows. This is our first coat of gloss. It needs to be rubbed down and then have its final coat. A lot of people worry about overpaint onto the window frame, uh, onto the window pane, sorry. And uh, this paint's coming out. We're replacing this paint anyway. But I just wanted to show, I've been careful with the other ones, but you don't really need to be. You can overpaint onto the glass and then get yourself a fresh new Stanley blade that needs to be new and all you do is you go into the window wood itself and then when you've gone all the way up to the window frame you then take the blade and then into the glass you scribe down 
like that. And then all this just comes straight away. Look at that, that professional finish. Just done that section there. So don't worry about overpaint. In fact, people mask, some people spend ages uh, cutting in. Don't worry about that, guys. Be clumsy with it. Go right up to the, the window. And then, as I say, get yourself a fresh Stanley blade. It's got to be a good, fresh Stanley blade. New one. <laughs> uh, no fancy holders. Use your thumb and finger. And uh, right up to the edge. Top tip today. So we want to mount some large prints that I had done. So all I did was go to Google and look for uh, 1900s to 1940s French theatre and cinema prints. And you have to do a search in high definition images. And I managed to pick this one up. She's really pretty. It's a theatre poster. And um, it will go up on the Arnold wall. But of course, when you buy something this size... Getting a frame for it would be really expensive. So what I've done is I've got a bit of um, thin 3mm board. Uh, this board was £11 a sheet for um, 2,400mm by, I think it was 1,200mm. So this is a much smaller piece. It actually cost me €5. Euros. Uh, the poster was free because I downloaded the image and then I had it printed for I think that was 15 euros and I bought some of this PV uh, plastic flexible plastic it must be again sort of one and a half two mil thick and then lastly uh, these are six these are six euros a length and uh, it's just a very simple uh, molding but it's got a rebate it's got a rebate all down here so we can make a frame from this, a simple frame. So the idea is to make a poster frame. So, so we've um, stuck the poster to this board and um, I bought the board deliberately slightly too big. So I'm just going to trim down this edge I've already done. I'm just going to take off the excess back to the original border and then we'll be ready for the frame. Let's just chop that. Absolutely perfect. Happy with that. Okay, so we've got our board and our plastic cut to size. Uh, some double sided sticky tape just down on uh, the plastic to stop that pinging out. And then I've got uh, this profile, you can see that, with a rebate in it. These were six euros a length, just softwood. Um, I've painted them black. And now we're just going to do the mitres uh, to create the border. So we're looking at the end of the floorboards from the hall and originally uh, this used to go outside. There's an outdoor terrace there before the previous owners put the conservatory on. But it's had some weathering, it's had some worming. So we've got a combination of dry rot here 
and a little bit of woodworm. So we need to replace uh, the rotten timber with fresh timber. There's two ways we could do this, uh, I think. Uh, we could either scarf in uh, fresh timber, so we cut away the waste, but that would rely on me having hardwood the same width as this, which I don't have. What I do have is some old hardboard uh, flooring, which is a lovely thick gauge, tongue and groove, but it's not the right width. It's slightly narrower, as you can see. So I think the way we're going to do this is, is take the width of that board, translate that to here, and then put a fresh strip in uh, horizontally to these. Now that will mean this piece here um, won't have all of its rot affected, but luckily this is a smaller piece, so I'm wondering whether we can then use this smaller gauge board to fill that hole there. There may be some wood filler in there, some treatment, and have a look. Here is a look at the condition of the timber that came out. So it's definitely the right thing to do. Of course it was the right thing to do. So we just need... Okay, what we're going to do is just put the new board down on a bed of smooth concrete, which we've uh, just mixed up. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry now, and then a bit of stain over the top. And that... Okay, so that's the um, rotten wood from the end of these boards done. Quite happy with that. New piece of skirting board is up and painted, just drying.